Taylor here with AcroSpray Drones. We've talked a lot about the LiDAR system on the J100, the advanced obstacle avoidance and terrain following capabilities of the J100. So I thought what better way to show you that than to show you what is typically the most challenging application scenario for any spray drone, and that is clear cut herbicide application uh, for a forestry. Um, that's what this is here. So this is this had been cleared a few years back. Uh, there are trees obviously still left here. Um, and so this is very common application in the forestry industry uh, where you're applying herbicide uh, to kill the weeds and keep what you want growing, growing, which is new trees. And some context here is pretty important. Um, so we had it set the drone set to 15 feet high, 21 feet per second, simulating an eight gallon per acre application. Fairly common uh, for this type of application. We weren't applying anything um, in, in this application here. We were just, you know, empty tank, let's let it run. Um, and we just gave it four, four points, four boundaries, uh, or four, four corners on a boundary. We didn't give it any uh, obstacle information, no 3D mapping, nothing like that. All of the obstacle avoidance and terrain following you're seeing is all real time uh, by the J100. Before I go any further, uh, our error message is up on the top left. Yes, the left front arm says it's not locked. It is locked. The sensor is bad uh, in this unit here. We just had not replaced it. Uh, we had to we had to override the warning message for, for before we could even take off, just to get that out of there. Okay, so LiDAR. How does LiDAR work? Well, LiDAR works by uh, basically light reflectance, right? It sends lasers out um, and then it pings back. And if at surface ref can reflect any light at all, uh, then it's reflected back and it calculates the time it takes to get back to the LiDAR. And that in turn calculates the distance. Um, the J100 has two LiDAR units on it, one forward facing and one downward facing. And then it ha also has a radar uh, on the back of the drone uh, so you get 360 degrees of obstacle detection. That's what you're seeing down here in the center of the screen. Um, you're seeing obstacles behind the drone, to the side of the drone, and in front of the drone. This is your horizontal obstacle detection on the J100. It does, so the way it works on its path planning, um, it knows where it's supposed to go, latitude and longitude, as far as height um, and you know, obstacles, that's all done in real time. And it creates a three-dimensional flight route as it flies in real time. Now it can't show like all three dimensions on the screen. So instead it shows you those separately. Um, so this is your horizontal obstacle uh, detection right here. And this is a path the drone will take horizontally. There's the drone in green uh, on this little map. Uh, and that green line right there is the path left and right. And there you see it's planning to the right right now. Uh, and then this right here, on the, just to the left of that, this is your vertical obstacle detection slash terrain following. So there you see it's planning the path up and then it's going to plan, plan the path down once it gets through this little, uh, this little slot here. That green line is going to jot down. There you go. Um, so those are your three dimensions, you know, forward, backward, left and right, um, and then up and down right there. That way the user, you, as you're operating the drone, you can actually see that in real time. Even though you're not doing anything, you know, you, we didn't give any stick input during this entire video, this entire application. There's no stick input. It's all autonomous flight. Um, what this is, truthfully, is peace of mind. In this scenario, we're not going to get the best application because, you know, look at this mess right here of flight paths. There's only so many pathways it can take through this mess of trees and it's taking the same paths you can see here. Um, so it's going to, you know, you're not going to get the best application, but at least you're going to have peace of mind. Um, in this scenario, we probably would want to fly up and over those trees. We want to use the sticks and actually fly up to get over those trees or do some pre-mapping ahead of time. But if you don't, the drone's not going to crash. At least we haven't crashed it yet. And we've tried to uh, on many, many occasions. Um, so as far as what speeds does this work at? You know, we're flying at 21 feet per second here in this video. Uh, you can go up to 32.8 feet per second with all of this autonomous obstacle avoidance and terrain following uh, turned on. 
Uh, you can fly faster than that if you turn some of that off. Um, we did not fly that fast uh, because this is an eight gallon breaker application scenario. You have to fly a bit slower for that to, to happen. Uh, and it does work on return to home. There, this is a return to home flight right here. There you can see it's dodging around a tree. Uh, in this scenario, we probably would have been better off to set our return to home height higher. That way it wouldn't have to go um, you know, around those trees, but just go up and over them. Uh, but nevertheless, your peace of mind is there during application, return to home, and to the field. It is a truly autonomous platform in some of the most challenging scenarios. Even at the start point, here you see it's starting actually on top of some big trees, and then it's gonna go down um, once it clears those. Thought this was good to showcase the LiDAR on the J100. Um, it has impressed us immensely thus far. Um, so if you have challenging scenarios like this, might be good to look into. If you want to know more about J100, uh, if you want to see a demo for yourself, uh, please reach out to us and let us know. Thanks.